There he is, the big man himself then. 15 stone, 11 and a half, coming to work again. And he goes in the ring as though he's going out for a stroll. But believe me, he stretched us a little bit nervously. He doesn't kid us too much. He gets that adrenaline working for the big event. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your judges at ringside, Tony Smersina, Wally Russ, Ilsen Stremel, timekeeper, Buzz Massa, counting in the knockdown, Chris Schaller. Now for the main event of the evening, for the North American Heavyweight Championship, 12 rounds. Light heavyweight champion of the world from Albuquerque, New Mexico, weighing 180 pounds, the Duke City Destroyer, Bob Foster. Well, that's a new title that seems to have used Foster, the Duke City Destroyer. He's really a highway patrolman in Albuquerque. And wearing white trunks, the former heavyweight champion of the world, the North American heavyweight champion from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, weighing 221 and one quarter pounds, Muhammad Ali. Well, the referee he's is a big one there. 221 and a quarter. And the referee, Mills Lane, is a lawyer from Nevada. So he ought to be able to keep order okay. Well, what I'm getting this is then in the Casino Hotel in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, with only an exclusive 1,700 customers, the heavy rollers, that means the big gamblers, $150 at the ringside pew, $75 the cheapest seats. Down, he must go to the furthest neutral corner and say that I'll wave him back. We both understand that. Okay, good luck to both of you. Shake hands now. Come our box. So the referee's instructions, and they've even ordered them from come out fighting to come out boxing for this man, Ali, and also for Foster, because he can box a bit. So then the, the handicap match, I think, the reigning world light heavyweight champion here, Bob Foster, the man who fought this man, Ali, so many years ago as an amateur in a training session, had him on the floor with a left hook and said, I've always waited for the chance to do it again. Well, now we'll know. There's a lot of talk about boxing in this altitude and whether Foster is better prepared for it as he lives at altitude and he's been in training here long. But whatever way, I think uh, the breathtaking scenery enough and we hope for a breathtaking exhibition from both of them. Well, there's one thing for sure, the lighter man of the two isn't backing off, and he's trying to fight side on to present uh, a smaller target for our lead. Well, Foster said he'd try and tee off, he'd try and set up Ali for the finishing punch. The big man now five pounds heavier than he weighed against Floyd Patterson. But still getting up on those toes at 30. Hasn't altogether lost that uh, youthful exuberance. And that's trainer Angelo Dundee there in the corner, that unusual shot. Well, Foster is said to be able to match Ali for reach, but we haven't seen it yet because he hasn't been close enough. Well, Ali almost treating it with contempt. 
can you imagine that? The man, the way he knocked out Finnegan, 11 world title defenses at the light heavyweight limit. That was a sharp looking left hook. He really teed off with that one, Ali. He wasn't falling with that one. Yelling in Ali's corner, Bundini Brown. Let him know you're the boss. So we're then into the last 10 seconds of the opening round. Foster certainly tasted those very powerful left jabs of Ali in the opening round. And that whistling there, of course, is for the beauty who's coming in with the rounds board. Very distracting, I must say, not only for boxers, but for commentators as well. So as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. There's Ali there. Really looks as though he could doze off in a corner. What a fantastic man this is. He's now... 30. Looks as though he could box forever. This is his 41st fight and of course lost only one against Joe Frazier and there was some dispute about that too. Second round I and mean, when it's scheduled for 12 then. assure you from close up you can almost feel the thud of that it is hits Foster's face that's a hard enough punch rather like a Chinese water torture keep tapping him on the head there certainly a lot of noise going on in Ali's corner there I'm surprised that this uh, lawyer referee doesn't call him to order a bit But it's quite obvious to me that Foster's trying to tee off. He's trying to make Ali lean into him, get closer, and throw a hard blow. Frazier gambled a lot more when he fought Joe Frazier. Only lasted two rounds, but that really was a hard two rounds. Foster trying to get a jab back at him now. He's flicking it out a bit, trying to use his reach. Well, this is one of the biggest rings uh, I've seen. It's at least 20 foot. It really is uh, decoratively done. But they're not using it at all. It's very heavily padded. And I don't know whether they can use oxygen canisters in the corner, but I understand that the Nevada State Commission said no. It's uh, dangerous, but they allowed them to use it uh, in training to help with the altitude problem. Well, you heard that one. I should have thought he's ready for cooking, says Ali Second. Sheriff isn't giving up with his duel yet. Well, 
Well, that's the face of a man with a problem. So a change of scenery now with the uh, round girl. And it looks as though Bob Foster's also taking rather a crafty peek at her, taking his eye off the flight for a minute. He certainly can't afford to do that. So this is the tenth fight Ali has had since he lost uh, to Joe Frazier in 1971. And this is, keeps himself in shape the whole time looking for that return. But he still hasn't scored a really clean cut knockout since he was last champion in 1967 against Zora Foley. Although Jürgen Blind did in fact uh, get counted out, but it wasn't considered a clean knockout. Into round three then. And the pattern fairly firmly set, I would have thought. The big man using this very stiff jab. Foster trying to tuck himself inside it there. There it is. And use a left hook. He can also use a short right hand punch. You may recall how he knocked out Mike Quarry with a superb left hook. But I also have seen him knock opponents out with a short right hand. Now I wonder if he can get away with it here. Looks to me that the intimidating bit now by Ali. This is... Uh, when he turns on that show a bit, Foster almost scared out of his life. He's patting him on the back. Can you imagine? This is a man who really rips heads off at the light heavyweight limit. That's Ali treating him just like a toy there. And they're yelling in the corner, stop playing, champ, let's go. Well, in fact, he isn't a champ, although they've called him the North American champion for this one. It really is uh, Foster's psyched out of this fight, it looks, doesn't it? It looks as though he really doesn't know what to do with this big bear coming at him. Well, he's got to do a bit better than this, Foster, for $125,000. He's starting to fight until he drops. Ali's almost inviting him to do something. And he's talking to the corner there, Ali. He's saying, don't worry about him. like a father spanking a child you you couldn't believe that this man was the world light heavyweight champion a very fearsome opponent in his own division he really is humiliating foster was almost as one-sided here as a deer hunt. Well, you can hear this uh, very high-paid audience here getting a bit restive there. They want to see a bit more from Ali. I think they want to see more from Foster, in fact, because uh, there's not much more this fellow can do if the opposition won't open up. Foster, he won the light heavyweight title back in 1964. He knocked out Dick Tiger. He walked into Madison Square Garden with only 35 cents in his pocket and came out with a world championship. But it'll take a little bit better show than this for Foster to give this man any trouble at all.
So, round four then. And I don't think there's any need for identification here. If you don't know Muhammad Ali, you must have been living in a cave. Point is, I don't think it's the exact weight that's so much of an advantage for Ali because he isn't leaning on Foster or shoving him around. It's just sheer size and mastery. What do you know about that? A warning for a rabbit punch. Well, at least the referee got himself into the picture. at least uh, managing to get the odd punch back now. Been exercising that left hand of his on the south for the uh, one-armed bandits in this casino during training. Should be in good shape. These two could really, they really could fight in a phone booth, there's no doubt about it. around the face that might have livened Ali up to say well I don't think I'm going to let this go much longer if this keeps up it hardly moved out of that centre circle Believe it or not, a little mouse, as they call it in boxing, under Ali's eye. He has a swelling there. First time I've seen that pretty face ruffled, and I'm wondering how it happened. here collects the judges scorecards at the end of each round so as they say no skullduggery is uh, permitted and they're given to an adjudicating panel well I don't think you needn't uh, worry about that because Ali's uh, so far in front at the moment but they're using an ice pack uh, on, his, on Ali's face now bit of grease around Foster's face there to help him slip a few punches I would think and that's that conclave there in Ali's corner with Angelo Dundee using that ice pack just to keep a swelling down it around uh, Ali's left eye Well, I'm wondering now in the fifth round whether Ali is going to hang about. Well, it looks like they're going a bit now, doesn't it? as though there's blood coming from that swelling around Ali's eye. Well, that is a real turn up for the book, isn't it? I think I must keep my eye on the referee. And what a, what a finishing punch there 
it looked as though Ali really didn't enjoy uh, his face being marked like that. They're going through the mandatory eight count and pushing Ali to a neutral corner. This lawyer referee's making a whole thing about that. So at the first sign of blood, his own blood, Ali opened up. Oh, and a left hook there. It really unhinged Foster's knees, but he's having a go. And his own second's almost in the ring with him there. Just look at that. Foster's management halfway in the ring with him, but they won't get in. The setting here really is almost like a bare fist fight. And isn't Foster getting some encouragement? The moment he gets through with a punch, the crowd go crazy there. But he's rocking again there. He's giving it all he's got, Foster, but his legs are unhinging. Yes. I don't think he's going to get up from that, is he? He's looking at the corner and saying, I can't do it. Is he going to count him out? No, he's made it. Almost trying to climb up Ali's leg there, the left hook. This is the third knockdown. They've waived the three knockdown rule in Nevada as we come up to the end of this round. Originally, if a man went down three times, they would stop the fight. But he might survive this round, Foster. I doubt it. Now, the bell can't save him because the count will go on. And he's counting on the referee until he gets up. came you talk about when punches land it goes to the boots and you'll see how Ali's punches really make Foster's legs unhinged there look well I wonder if they can revive this man now I think he does need the oxygen to pull himself together he also needs to be able to fight a bit too so there you are, an unusual sight indeed. Muhammad Ali cut, and Angelo Dundee just staunching it there with adrenaline. And that's the doctor getting out the ring there, Ferdi Pacheco, who works Ali's corners the whole time. So round six now, with Foster well softened up in the fifth. Now Ali getting up at his toes. I haven't completely stomped that injury around Ali's eye there. There's just a slight trickle of blood. And this was the round now that uh, Ali predicted a way in. Originally he said eight, and then he said this fellow started to jive, he'll fall in five. It's all a bit of a game, of course, with Ali, but it's uh, taken very seriously around the world, and in some places he's hated for it. up on his toes, we may even get the Ali shuffle going in a minute. I think this is a bit of a show-off round now for Ali. He's getting up on his toes, working himself into good condition. Well, he isn't pressing that advantage Ali as he needs. Most fighters would come out really raving mad, throw punches, but this fellow knows it all. He knows he can bide his time. On the other hand, can you imagine what would happen if Foster teed off and landed a punch on Ali's chin? I think you could hear the roar around the world if that happened. So 
that's what they call in fight circles taking a bit of a liberty Foster's getting through with those left hands I wonder if he's going to pay for it and they're yelling from Ali's corner now double them up into use those punches in flurries really is a, a red swelling there around Ali. That's really the topic of conversation here, I think. Those left hands, they really are something softer up the whole time. You need a really strong neck and heart to cushion those. Well, I think that's, uh, I was going to say, a unique sight there, an injury to Muhammad Ali. It shows that somebody has been hitting him, and it wasn't the referee. And they use these adrenaline swabs there, and of course, Angelo Dundee is an expert here to patch up that wound, but it isn't serious at all. But I don't think Ali can afford to take uh, any risk and allow Foster to catch him on it, because if it really got a bad cut, then he'd be in trouble. Almost like a makeup artist there, isn't he? This is uh, show business with blood for Angelo Dundee. Into the seventh then. And you have that swelling below Ali's eye and the cut just above it. Very hard to work out what are Foster's tactics. Is he saying, I think Ali might tire a little bit? Or is he saying, no, I don't want to get too near this fellow, I'll cop it again? Well, it looks as though it's put a bit of new heart into Foster, that side of blood, doesn't it? done well really to recover from those knockdowns although Ali hasn't really piled on any pressure either well he played that right hand on Ali's eye all right what encouragement. Anybody who gets through with a half a punch against this fellow gets all the encouragement in the world. Any chance, I wonder, of the repeat of the Henry Cooper night? Just look at Bundini Brown there going crazy in the corner, one of Ali's seconds. He was warned off in New York for doing this and throwing water over him during the fight. But that right hand... That really is the killer punch. It was a long punch too. And I think it thickened Foster as much as anything. Looks as though he's going for the finish here, the payoff now. And a trickle of blood right down the face and there's a, a real mean look on Ali. Oh, and a right hand shot. Uh, he's just pretending. He is just pretending. What a character, this man. He took Foster's best right-hand punch, and he's pretending that he's hurt. What a showman. Look at that. The whole world go crazy. They'll think that this fellow's going down. But take my word for it, I'm three feet away, and he's taking no notice. This must be, surely, one of the most unique fighters in heavyweight history. He took a punch full on the chin, he came back, and he just pummeled the life out of this man.
So let's have a look now again at that right hand punch. Believe me, it hurt enough. It thudded into Ali's chin, but he put on that show with the wobbly knees. He did that when uh, Jerry Quarry caught him. He overreached himself there. You don't see the right hand punch, you just see the knockdown there, the final knockdown there of Foster. But he looks as though he thinks he's won it, doesn't he, Ali? And from a different angle, from above, you saw that shot. So believe me, that was no larking about. So there you are now. So eighth round. And with Foster up and down like a yo-yo now. And through his best punch, he knows he can't get away with it. One of the secrets, I think, of Ali's greatness is his ability to take a good punch. He was on the floor with Joe Frazier. Of course, Henry Cooper left, hooked him over in 1963. But he just crumbled there like a pack of cards, Foster. He's, I don't think he can make this. I know he's uh, looked as though he'd never get up before, but he's had enough now. And it looks like a slow count, too. They're giving him every chance. No, he's out. His legs have gone like a kid in a playpen there. And be fair, a little bit of compassion there from Muhammad Ali. He turned it on at the start of the eighth round. He knew he had to go out and do the job, and he did it well. So now, when he gets his best back, let's uh, go and have a word with Muhammad Ali. I think we may have to call you the prophet, young man. You predicted eight rounds. Well, yes, sir. I was lucky. I figured it would go about eight. Luckily, I picked the right one. Ali, tell me about Foster. Now, that's the first time in all the fights that I've seen you in, and I've seen practically every one of your fights, that I've ever seen you cut. Yeah, I got cut in a little light bruise. Hit me with a glazed left hook. It wasn't solid, but it scraped me. But I'm human also. One out of 300 fights ain't too bad. No, it certainly isn't. I want to say hello to my friend Major Coxon, my wife Belinda, and Count and Ronnie and all my friends out there. And Bernie Pollock, a great friend of mine, who I built my training camp in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania on his land. And all my friends and fans in Louisville, Kentucky. All right, now tell me this. Did the altitude, the 6,200 feet affect you? Did you feel tired? Yeah, I hate to admit it, but I did. It really, it looked as though you were working and laboring a little harder than usual. Yes, mostly flat-footed style. The prancing and the dancing and the punching would have been a little too much for me. Now tell me this, uh, one punch tonight, the first left hook that set him down, do you think that was the start of it? Yes, naturally it was. It shook him, but not quite enough. But when a man is dazed like that, the more he's hit, then the more uh, easy it is for him to go down. Well, you certainly couldn't fault his courage. You knocked him right. down so many times, he constantly kept right. getting back up. Be surprised. Champ, if we can, uh, we would like to roll Don't it. Don't that left hook. See if we can back up our tape here now so you have an opportunity to see it. And perhaps you can describe what's going on. Well, right now I'm just feeling it out. He's real tricky. Uh, I had to watch him. He didn't have the power. Only one foot with the left hook. A quick snap and left there which kept getting to me, as you see. But he didn't have the weight to follow through. I thought I just caught him with a grazed right hand. I could do a lot of dance and a lot of footwork, but he wasn't a Joe Frazier, Savalo type fighter where you have to keep moving away from him because he don't charge you too much. Well, now that was a long right that connected, and it right. appeared that that extra power of yours, being a true heavyweight, really was the difference well, against the light extra heavyweight. Extra power helps a lot, right. Now, you got uh, 41 pounds on him in terms of weight. 
uh, as a light heavyweight, he also seemed to punch pretty well for that yeah, weight. So I'm glad I wasn't a light heavyweight because if I was about his same weight, I think it'd been a lot of difference in the fight. I believe I would have won, but probably not as easy. Ali, you fought everybody that has come along. You have now taken the light heavyweight champion out of there. Where else do you go? What's the word on Frazier? Well, I'm fighting all the top contenders. Frazier's not actually doing too much right now. They forced him to take a fight and, and still look like it might not come off, but they forced him to fight George Fulmer. And the way he looked with Terry Downs and Ron Stander, I hope he's in better shape for Fulmer because I want him to win because I want one more shot at Joe Frazier. Well, the whole world wants to see that fight. Here is another knockdown on our backup. We'll back the tape up for you so you can see this one. Go ahead, take it over. Well, right now, I'm watching him because he comes up with that jab to the body, and I'm looking for that big hook to the head. There he's throwing a lot of left jabs, and I just caught him with a solid right right there. Surprised he could take as much as he did. Yeah, okay. Now caught him with a hook, another right, and that was it. No question about it, he couldn't get up from that one. Ali, at any time, were you ever in doubt? Well, not really. In doubt, well, I would knock him out in the round, I predicted. I predicted round eight. Then I predicted round five, and I missed five, but I did get him in eight, but I should have stuck him out. All right, now you've got uh, Reg Guttridge here from the ITV over in England going there by satellite. Hello, hello, hello to Reg and all my friends there who support the ITV. Mary and George, great friends of mine, and Patty Monaghan, my number one fan over there. Well, I'll congratulate you uh, on their behalf, Mommy, but it's most unusual to see you, I was going to say, with the black eyes. That was... No, I got a little cut. A How little did that happen? He grazed me with a left hand. I am still a little human, but well, that's the first time I've really had a bruise in the professional Well, I, I always knew you were human. Did this altitude get you at all? I know that yeah, you prophesied oh, the right round. I but... thought it wouldn't, but it did. I couldn't dance and move like I wanted to. There was no need for it because he wasn't an aggressive fighter. Two, he just stays and stops. Yeah. So it'd be real dead if I just did nothing but dancing when I wasn't dancing away from nothing. Well, I know you're looking to fight Joe Frazier again. We're all looking forward to that. Are Joe you, Frazier and that in England? A, they have another Joe over there, Joe Buckner. Oh, they do? Yes. As soon as I clean up everything here in America, so I'm being the real world champion. I can't let nobody control one of the rooms in my house, which is the world. I want to come to London and try that Joe Buckner. And he's nearly as pretty as you, isn't he? Yes, he told me he was prettier than me, and I have to change all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fight him right there in London. Look forward okay, to that thanks for that. Thank you. 